Hello, beautiful people around the world. Just here to make sure you have an okay life. I hope everyone is blessed, well, and healthy, and that nothing but the best is going on in all you beautiful people's life. Oh, man. Now, we have a very important topic today as we're talking about and have a video about how bad public EV chargers are, y'all. And y'all know me being a Tesla owner or EV owner for the last three years. I have experienced this myself from trying to charge at off-brand uh, EV stations, um, non-Tesla related, not the non-Tesla uh, network, and I've been a complete nightmare. But then there's some that have worked for me. But um, again, nothing, in my opinion, beats the Tesla charging network. Nothing beats that whole Tesla network, y'all. Again, I've been to chargers. That completely don't work out of service. Um, it gives you an error code. You got to download 30 to 50 apps to try to get the thing to work. It's a complete nightmare. And I see why some a lot of people complain, you know, say, well, Rick, how, how you know, the charging. I'm scared to buy one. I want one so bad, but I'm scared to buy one if I'm, you know, not reliable to even charge it, you know, because I have a. A hundred mile commute. Um, I have to go here, here, and here. You know, when I want to go to the grocery store, can I charge my car? You know, I see these chargers sitting outside my grocery store, but people say only one of them work out of the ten stalls that are there. <laughs> you know, and I've experienced that myself trying to charge outside of a Kroger or Walmart, and <laughs> the charger just not work, y'all. You know, it's really frustrating and pretty sad. But again. They are starting to update them, and um, companies are starting to make them more easy to use, uh, the DC Fast Charger. So, again, it's just going to take some time, y'all, in my opinion. It's going to take some time for these new updates to start rolling in and hitting um, di these different areas around the world. But today, we're in Los Angeles County, baby. So, let's check this out. We're in a Rivian, too. So, shout out to the Wall Street Journal and... Um, we're going to see how bad these, these chargers are, y'all. Again, I've experienced this myself. Um, and I've charged, especially when I had my Model 3 before I sold it for my Model Y. Um, I used to charge at all kind of places, man. Bootlegged up, rigged outside of grocery stores, the mall. In front of the mall, they have it where you can park in the front and charge EVs. Um, and then sometimes I would just literally just park there just to... You know be parked all the way in the front so i can walk inside the mall and come right back out my car be in the front um but then again i didn't plug my car up because the charger usually didn't work or i just didn't want to go through that hassle of opening opening multiple apps trying to find the right app and submit my card and do all kind of i just parked i just parked there because i have the tesla you know <laughs> so yeah hey you gotta do what's best for you you know what i'm saying if it works it works and then you'll see people um, parking in these spots and they're not their cars are not even charging. So comment down below if you, if you experienced that or if you've done that as well. You know, it, it kind of sounds messed up, doesn't it? <laughs> but hey, these chargers are something else, y'all. But again, that Tesla network has worked every single time. You know what I'm saying? Over here where I live, everybody has them. Everybody supercharges. But the, these last two years, I have not supercharged my car at all. Uh, well, no, I would say probably once, two, maybe the most, probably three times these last two years with my Model Y. Um, I, and I also don't recommend supercharging a lot. If you have the home situation and, you know, it just depends on your situation, guys. But me personally, I'm just more of a, I don't go too, too far, too, too crazy. I don't do any road trips, really. Um, I did last time I did a road trip was in my Model Three, but home charging I get free charging from 9 p.m. to 7 in the morning. Um, my light bill doesn't really go up from the 200 to the 400 range, and hey, smooth living, you know, smooth, smooth living. So let's check this video out, y'all. How bad are public EV chargers? And they tested over a hundred of them. Shout out to Wall Street Journey, y'all. Let's check this one out. We in that Rivian boy today, too. Los Angeles. Good views. Here we 
we are, Beverly Hills. Bad traffic, so many electric vehicle chargers. Charger. Yeah, comment down below if y'all have had any bad experiences. How has it been with your EV? And especially for you non-Tesla owners that have to use these other chargers. Um, comment down below what you, how your experiences are. Have you experienced bad, um, terrible, broken air chargers that give you errors? Or, you know, you, you can't figure out how to download the app. Or, you know, the chargers say that they, they, they're working, but it doesn't work at all. Comment down below what your experiences are as an EV owner when it comes to charging your vehicle. I know we're going to have a lot, probably 80% people that love it are people that just do home charging. <laughs> I know. Your number one, two, three. From the streets of downtown to the beach in Santa Monica. 11, 19, 23. We visited 30 DC fast charging locations. Oh wow. None of them run by Tesla. 28, 29. 30. That meant more than 100 different charging stalls. 100 different chargers, y'all. There was just one little problem. Yeah, this one's broken. Broken and also broken. That is tough. Okay, many problems. Come on, you can do it. Connect to the vehicle. Error detected. There's nothing on the screen. I've tried. That error detected has happened to me so many times, y'all. And I was just seeing if the station worked. My car really didn't need to be charged. Like, I've literally just come up to stations to see because i was just curious how does these public chargers work can i charge my tesla without using the tesla network that was my biggest concern um two years ago and i just had nothing but the worst experience ever nightmare experience so comment down below you guys experience and um again they are rolling out new updates new machines New companies are, are, are starting to come, you know, budge in. So we are seeing an update over here and new charges are being put everywhere. But um, again, comment down below you guys experience. Putting my credit card in every way. At just over 40% of the charging locations, I encountered problems. Man. Yeah, not good. 40. As the U.S. moves to an electric vehicle future, L.A. is ahead of it all. But oh boy, are things a mess here. What can we learn from it all? And can it be fixed? All right, let's go test a whole bunch of chargers. Here's how we set up this test. Los Angeles County has more DC fast chargers than any other place in the country. So- And there's a lot of EVs <laughs> in Los Angeles County. There's a lot of EVs over there. Um, everywhere you look, everybody's driving an EV, kind of like over here in Texas, um, you know, so, these chargers, you know, these companies, they, they these, you, you got to figure out a way for this to be reliable, you know, especially for more cons for con the future consumers. I mean, if you go to a hundred chargers and only f and forty of them don't work, that is pretty, that's pretty scary. <laughs> I'm being honest, that is scary. That is very very scary, you know. Over two days, I tried to go to as many as I could in a Rivian R1T. Why Rivian. the Rivian? Well, it's awesome. Unless you're trying to enter a parking garage. Okay, <laughs> duck down. I'm totally aware that ducking does nothing. <laughs> Plus, like the majority of non-Tesla EVs, it has a CCS charging port. When you've got that port and you need to charge, a DC fast charging station, typically an EVgo or Electrify America, is your best bet. Yep. Except those stations, according to my testing, have three main problems. Number one, out of order. Out of order. I inspected 126 charging stalls in total. 27% of those stalls were just flat out of order. Wow. That is, they had a sign or an error that said, Charger unavailable, out of service. So it works. EV Comment down below if you've experienced this. Please share it. I wanted to, I know it's a, probably a ton of y'all, man. I've experienced this myself. Go, Electrify America, and EVCS all told me that they quickly try to fix these issues by deploying technicians to the sites. But honestly, I preferred this issue because it saved me from the hassle of trying the charger and then failing. Which brings me to number two, payment. 
nearly 10% of the stalls visited had payment issues. Payment it's issues. It's cash only. Where would I put cash? Yes, there were specifically <laughs> repeated credit card problems. Why are you beeping at me? Present card again. Okay, nope. Let's see if this will work. No, it's telling me. We've to had this problem even at vending machines. <laughs> Venom machines, y'all. We've had this problem at Venom machines. Swipe the card. Present card again. Swiping card. Present card again. That is scary, Try man. Card. Swiping my other card. Nope. Nothing. Now, Eat just it. imagine arriving at a station at like 8 to 10 percent. And I don't recommend you guys get your car that low, you know. Um, <laughs> but imagine arriving where you just really need to charge and you cannot make a payment there's a and then you look at the other machine there's an error then you look at the you know there's a, a look at the other machine out of order that is so scary you know can't even charge my car to make it back home cs said these issues can arise because the payment hardware is made by a different company than the charger evgo said paying by app is a more seamless experience and i found that app paying was better for all the chargers some EVs and charging companies even support plug-in charge. So it just starts charging your account when you plug into your car. But you still have to set those apps up. Why don't you take Apple Pay? Number three, connection issues. Even if the payment works. It is connecting now to my vehicle. Can you two connect? Charger, meet Rivian. Rivian, meet Charger. Connect, <laughs> error detected. This may be the most frustrating one of all. When the car and the charger don't connect to each other, what many call the handshake issue. Basically, when you plug the charger into the car, the two have to talk to each other and send information about voltage and energy levels back and forth. And a lot can go wrong in this process. I'll get to more of that soon. Sometimes the charger will prompt you with ways to troubleshoot. Please unplug the connector, wait 10 seconds, plug in the connector and try again. I will try to unplug and replug like a router, but it doesn't always work. And to be fair, this handshake issue isn't just a Rivian thing. I've experienced this problem on many different EVs. Yep. To find out why this is all such this a is, broken mess, this is, this I met is up sad, with Charger Help, an LA-based company that attempts to clean up the mess. So you fix chargers? Yes. There are a lot of broken chargers. But yeah, no, we fix a lot of chargers in LA, especially with our uh, LA technicians that we have here. Sergio, one wow. of the charger help technicians, walked me through fixing one stall. It shows that it has a fault here. So a we'll power cycle the unit. We can go ahead and hit the breaker to shut it off. We got a breaker. Yep, as simple as turning it off and turning it on again. So we're getting the green uh, prompt lights, which means the charging station is back online. But most repairs are not that simple because again, all he did was flip the breaker. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> and we talked about this in, a, in, a, in our last video, man. I'm gonna leave the link at the uh, at the end. We talked about this at our, in our last video. It was very, very important. The car and the charger are computers that have to communicate with each other. This is the whole motherboard here which uh, sometimes goes bad and we have to replace. Sergio explained that this set of cables connect from the motherboard to the charger to communicate with the car. It's that handshake I mentioned before. The charger tells the car how much voltage it can send. And the car says, hey, here's how much I can accept. But that's where things can break down. Sometimes the network where you're at, whichever area you're in, it's poor. So you have to try it multiple times. So it actually ends up working. If you notice when you try it like the third or fourth time, it ends up actually working. And remember, that's ridiculous. The DC fast chargers I tested. It should work the first time. I mean, everything should be, you know, that's that's scary, man. And um, this is why I'm I'm a lot of y'all was comment on my Rick. Rick, are you really pushing, pushing, pushing the EV? Um, the, the e this EV push, I'm like, no, I still appreciate my ICE vehicle. I still appreciate you ICE uh, folks. You know what I'm saying? I still appreciate the hybrids out there. You know what I'm saying? T take your time. Do your research before you get into one of these vehicles. Just because I've, 
can tell you nothing but good things in, in my last three years of owning EVs and Tesla, how I've enjoyed the life of just having a Tesla sitting outside right now, sitting in my garage, being able to go here, 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 and you know, and have nothing but the best experience doesn't mean you're going to have that exact same experience. You know what I'm saying? And I've had EV, um, you know, cars, motorcycles, and we're even planning on bringing an EV motorcycle on the channel um that we can do these fast charging and all kind of stuff like that so hey again it's not for everybody and it fits everybody's situation and everybody's standards so please do your research but this right here is scary um and i've and i've already and i've experienced this myself um not long ago so i've been there done that have to communicate with lots of different types of electric vehicles, which is why things can get so much more complicated than on Tesla's network. So it's one station trying to figure out how to communicate with multiple different types of firmware, whereas if you have a Tesla system, it's a vertically integrated, where they have a car, a station, and a payment system, that's all together. All together, that's what, that's what so makes it so beautiful. So what's the future of EV charging? Starting in 2024, Tesla's opening up its charging network, allowing yeah. cars from Rivian, Ford, and GM, and others to charge at Tesla stations. Doesn't fit, at least not yet. Eventually, those car companies will also adopt Tesla's NACS charging port. Will it be total hassle-free charging? I'm not so sure. Tesla is only used to charging their own cars. Yeah. And those other DC fast charging stations from EVgo, Electrify America, and more should get better too. At an EVgo station in Santa Monica, I got to try out some newer charging stalls. It says checking cable safety, matching voltage. This tells you what it's doing. These new machines are great. Representatives from each of the charger companies told me many of the issues I encountered were because of legacy hardware and that they are constantly upgrading, which we yeah, actually they're saw They're rolling out a new, some new joints. Knock, knock. Is there a charger in there? Plus, in September, the Biden administration opened up $100 million in federal funding to repair and replace <coughs> existing electric vehicle charging infrastructure. That's in addition to the $5 billion program to help states build out more EV charging sites, which should help with the lines. Excuse me? Are you guys almost done charging? So what did I learn here over the last few days? Well, if you can, charge at home or your hotel. Yeah. <laughs> Yet I met that home charging situation will never fail you, you know what I'm saying? Get that level 2 in that thing, man. Or if you don't do too many crazy miles and you only drive probably 50 miles, 100 miles a week, you could just use your level 1, you know? Everybody's situation is different though. So hey. Many travelers I prefer level and 2 though. Renters who don't have that option. Really? But I learned is patience have a lot of it when pulling into one of these stations. Patience. And understand that this isn't as simple as plugging your phone into the wall. Oh, and avoid credit cards whenever possible. Yep. Just use that charger's mobile app. Charging on the app. Uh, but the, if uh, LA is any sign. Yeah, that app. The best way to do it is the payment through the phone, the app. Um, again, I had a problem with a station that wouldn't accept the, my card as well. You know? And again, it's, it comes down to... Things being separated from, you know, multiple companies working with this station. It's just, it's terrible. This EV revolution is going to feel more like a slow, messy evolution. Charging. Woohoo. <laughs> At least that's what it says. Like I tell y'all, man, it's going to take some couple more years, couple more new things to roll out as we go through this ev journey um as things get better and things upgrade but uh again 2020 this upcoming year we're going to see the new charging um update with tesla and uh the fast charger so we'll see how this thing plays out and how how does it go and um if it can make things easier for other evs we will see y'all but um comment down below your experience have you had a nightmare experience as well um, again, I've shared you my stories I have and um, again, these last year year and a half, two years, I've only done home charging. Um, 
I charge up to about 70, 70, 75 percent max. Um, I love my charging situation. Uh, level two. Um, I've had it for three years now, and it does what it do, y'all. You know what I'm saying? It does what it do. But again, your situation might be different. Your commute might be different. Your lifestyle might be different. What you want to use the car for might be completely different. So, again, do your research. Take your time. Stay patient. And, hey, keep being amazing people, y'all. We still got love for our ICE vehicles out there. We got to appreciate and value our combustion engines as well. You know what I'm saying? And, hey, y'all keep being amazing people like I just said and spreading that love and we wishing the best in everybody's life that you guys life are boosted financially overall your marriage your relationships your love life your job your careers your occupations that everything in your life is boosted that you get what you want that you live the life that you deserve and hey join the okay life family and i will catch y'all in the next one and be sure to check out this the, the video that pops up right here as we just did a full video and review on a guy that needed a battery replacement in his Tesla Model Y. A battery replacement in 60,000 after 60,000 miles. After 60,000, it's a rare it's a rare case, but hey, these cases are happening now. So, go check this out and um I will catch y'all in the next one. Peace and love, y'all.